Regulation nation running amok. GOP presidential hopeful Rick Perry outblasting government regulations, saying one just cost his state 500 jobs this week as an energy company is forced to cut back. And it's not the only business getting hit with nearly 25,000 rules that are now on the books. Ten new ones coming every day, costing companies more than $160,000 a year. So do we need to scrap the rules to bring back the jobs? Well, hi, everybody. I'm Cheryl Cassoni, and welcome to Cashin' In. Our Cashin' In crew this week, we've got Wayne Rogers, Jonathan Honig, and Tracy Burns. And also joining us this week, we've got the Managing Director of Land Cult Trading, Todd Schoenberger, along with Democratic strategist Christopher Hahn. So welcome to all of you. Great to see you. And Tracy, I'm going to start with you. You say scrap these regulations. And that will, will jumpstart jobs. How so? Sure, you said it. $161,000 a year it costs businesses. That's, those are multiple employee salaries. Right now, small businesses are paying an average of $11,000 per employee just to follow all these dumb rules. And the administration plans on instituting another 219 regulations this year. Lord, all these businesses do is spend time complying with regulation. What about innovation and expanding the business? There's no time for that, and there's certainly no money left for that. Well, Wayne, let me ask you that. Is it the red tape argument? Is it there's too much red tape with regulation? It's too hard to go through companies to say, forget it, we're going to just kind of pull back, scale back? Well, obviously, some regulation is necessary in some cases. But, of course, when it's overregulated, the biggest problem with that, the underlying problem with that is big government. When you've got big government, large uh, corporations, big unions, all competing with each other, then they have to be regulated. If you had a lot of competition, competition, a lot of people in the market, in a free market, is its own regulator. In other words, if I have 15 people making a product, I'm going to get the best product at the lowest possible price. I don't need regulation. When I've got one or two companies doing this, dominating this in a monopolistic way, then I need regulation. You know, I, Chris, I don't know if you saw this, but Neil Cavuto in your world early this week, he, he had a speed reader come in to try and go through and speed read the regulation. The guy made it through like, I think, 4,000 pages and just threw up his hands and gave up. I mean, there was like no way he could even do it. But I mean, I think that's what businesses, Chris, are having to deal with there. And that's the problem. You know, listen, some regulations are good. Some are much needed. Some provide clean air, clean water, or make sure that people are safe in their workplace. What I think needs to happen with regulations is there has to be a time limit and a one bite at the apple for regulators. Once a company puts in their applications, the uh, regulators have one bite at the apple to say, hey, this is what needs to be changed, this is what not, doesn't need to be changed. What I hear from companies that I work with all the time is that, listen, we, we make the changes that the regulators tell us to make, and then they come back and say, hey, here's seven other changes that you yeah. didn't make. Yeah. So there should be a one bite rule. And if that happened, then you could have regulations. You could protect our energy, you could protect our clean air, you could protect our workers without having businesses suffer from yeah. the delays. It's the delays that kill them, not the cost in managing well, the election. Jonathan? But that, that's, that, that's the false assumption, Chris, right? If not for the regulation, then business people would be screwing you, they'd be cheating you, they'd be running rampant. I mean, I know that that's what many want to believe, but it's, it's true. simply not true. I mean, well, free market doesn't mean, as you know, free to cheat, free to defraud, free to poison water. The market and sure. the courts tell take that, care tell of that. that. To, tell that to but 1914. What but but, but, you know, but what go back regulators... To 1914, Jonathan. Just look at the clean water we had in 1914. Jonathan, Jonathan, go ahead. The, the, the point is, is that all regulators do, Chris, as you said, is destroy. They destroy. They it comes at a cost. Tracy mentioned 161 grand. Oftentimes, it's an unforeseen cost. They essentially disrupt the free market that does the job of regulators, and it ends for destruction and loss for everyone involved. Well, let me bring Todd Schoenberger into this because there could be some middle ground here. Look, I mean, in particular, Governor Perry was talking about it's, it's EPA regulations, it's the coal industry. That's half of the electricity in the United States. We need it. There might be power shortages now in that state. I think what the governor there was saying is, look, I understand the need for regulation, but why does it need to be so complicated? Why does it need to be so heavy-handed, fine, we'll help clean up the air, but give us time and work with us, don't work against us. Heavy-handed, and you can't test this. Look, for what we're seeing in Texas right now, they're talking about worrying about downstate winds, worrying about other states in the east that are going to be impacted. But realistically, though, you're talking about regulations that are not fully implemented, that can be implemented, and then tested again. Tracy said it best, lack of innovation, 160 grand that could go back into businesses that really could encourage new investment as well as new products and services which will then encourage more hires down the road. It's not just looking at a one-dimensional 160K. It's what you get out of it. In Cheryl, years can I get in on this power thing? Because, you know, I was on the Long Island Power Authority board, which is one of the largest utilities in the country. Sure. And I think that what's going on in Texas is a bluff. We have much stricter rules here in New York, and we've never had rolling
rolling blackouts ever in New York, and we've been able to deal with it here. Now, they could deal with it there, too, and I don't want to be breathing in Texas. It's not a bluff, fog. Chris. I don't it's want not to be, a bluff. It is Listen, a bluff. let me tell you I something. Have run power Look, companies. all these are the regulations. Todd, I've run them. Oh, oh you've okay. run it. I, right. I have run a power company. Oh, well, I've, I've been, oh, I've been, been a, a board plan. of trustees. Oh. I've, I've been on a board, board of trustees for one and of the largest power companies. I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. I think the bigger point is that there are extraneous fees consistently charged upon our companies. Even small businesses have to find stupid licensing fees. They are nitpick six ways till Tuesday because this government is broke and trying to come up with and money any way they can. The rules are prohibitive. They're not helpful. And, and, right. extra and, 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 and the the guys, hold well. on a second. Hold on. I want to go back to Wayne Rogers on this point. And again, trying to find middle ground here. Look, I mean, there, there's, you, you, there's some regulation I'm, su I'm sure is important in business. I mean, nobody wants to destroy, uh, nobody wants coal miners uh, to, to pass away. Nobody wants uh, the, the air to be polluted at the same time. Neither do the coal companies. But right. Wayne, exactly, thank you. Right. Bad for business. But Wayne, the idea here is that maybe that these regulations need to be a little more simplistic they need to be more that the, the, the companies need time they'll 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 come to the table but they feel like the government is overdoing it what did Neil just go through well he didn't even go through it 25,000 pages I mean that's the point well the, the, it, you're you're correct it is overdone and the Congress is, is, is abdicated their responsibility to the regulators. In other words, when they pass an act, you take Dodd-Frank, for example, it's 2,200 pages long. They didn't even re read it, and they passed it. Now, most of it in Dodd-Frank and in Obamacare, all of those regulations are dumped down to a regulatory agency, an agency that is not responsible to the public at all and is doing whatever they want to do without any guidance beyond what the law has given them to say, go do this, go regulate but this. Wayne, and they make up the rules the as they go along. Long. And it's, it's of course, a and constant problem in dealing with that. Jonathan? Yes, and the regulations themselves are destructed. I think that's what probably we're missing here is that Bernie Madoff, for example, is regulated. We don't think too often about the doctors we go to see, the banks we put our too money in. Too bad because, Bush hey, fired all the regulators because, that were supposed to be because, regulating hey, Bernie Madoff. That, we might not have but, had that but, problem. But, uh, we, well, first of all, Chris, Bernie Madoff <laughs> was regulated by the SEC. But even go back to the food pyramid, right? I mean, we followed a now discredited food pyramid for decades. Why? Because the FDA, the regulators, told us that was in our best interest. Regulators disrupt the private free market notion of essentially thinking for yourself. Well, guys, thanks.